Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike Quebec, and for this boxing instructional video, um, this is designed for those of you who've just gotten into boxing and you're just starting to spar. So if you've had about three to six months of experience and your coach is already having you spar but you've never done it before, uh, this is designed to show you a few tips on how to counter the jab. Uh, this is countering the jab with your own jabs. You're throwing counter jabs against your opponents or your sparring partner. All right, he's got head motion, he's moving. When I throw that jab, you know, this is after he's already gauged my timing and uh, my rhythm. When I throw that left jab, he's gonna squat forward and to his right. As he does that, his left shoulder ro uh, rolls or points right towards me. And the nice thing with that shoulder pointing right at me is he can throw his own counter jab at the same time, simultaneously. So we'll do that at half speed. He's got a, he's got a motion. He's lulling me in. When I throw my jab, shoom, there's his counter jab. We'll do that again. Head motion, <clears throat> counter jab. Remember, when he's slipping, anytime he's doing slipping or bobbing and weaving, it's never from the back. It's always from the legs. So. It's actually a squat. It's really, he's really doing squatting with his legs when he slips or when he ducks or bobs and weaves. Once again, there's his counter jab. Two more times from this side and we'll do it from the other side. He's got my rhythm. And he wants to point that left shoulder right at me as he throws his jab as he slips. I'm coming in with the jab and you notice he's just squatted from his legs forward and to his right while throwing his own jab. Now, I, also, I do emphasize forward rather than back. Here's the reason why. Ali, I'm going to ask you now to squat back into your right while throwing, trying to throw that counter jab. This doesn't have as much power. Yeah, your opponent will feel it, but if he's, uh, if he's well conditioned and his adrenaline is up, which it will be, uh, he won't really feel this as much. Plus, with his weight back, it doesn't have as much stopping power. With his weight forward, it's got a lot more body weight behind the punch. You want to think of leaning forward into the punch, putting your whole body weight behind it, as well as pushing off of the floor, as well as rotating your hip. Okay? So, those are the three things to get some power. And, of course, explosiveness. But uh, that's not the subject of today's video. Just a simple technique, slipping the jab. Here we go. Boom. Oh. Again, he's got head motion. Good. I am trying to touch his head, and he's going to make me miss. Good. And at the same time that he makes me miss, he throws. Two more, just like that. One more. Even at close range right here. And one more, one more, one more. This next counter off of the jab is, um, is almost, almost the same thing. It's just a variation. The only difference here is that Ali is really going to drop his level straight down, squatting. Again, he's, he's squatting when he, uh, when he ducks underneath. It's not from his back, it's from his legs. As he does that, to protect his face, his right hand is going to come across right in front of his face, and his left shoulder really turns towards me. He really turns completely sideways, as if his whole body is facing that wall, as he shoots his own body jab, his own jab. Now, ideally, it's better if he hits the solar plexus right around here, that area just underneath the chest and above the, uh, above the stomach. Uh, if he hits the stomach, it does count for a point, uh, but if, if he's fighting a conditioned boxer, chances are the guy's got very strong abs, he might be able to take it, or yeah, he will be able to take it. So ideally, if you're gonna hit for the body, aim for the solar plexus, or also aim for the rib cage. So he can aim for the ribs, or the solar plexus, as he squats underneath. When he squats, uh, he is gonna push off of the ball of his right 
foot. Not his front foot, but his back foot. He's going to push off of the floor to propel his body forward as he shoots his jab at my body. So this is his counter. We're going to go half speed, but he is going to duck underneath and hit my body. Ready? Here we go. That's it. There's your counter jab to the body. And of course this happens in a split second and it happens really fast, but we're going slow right now. Good. Again. Good. Let's try it from the other side. Same exact thing. Ali's got uh, head motion and rhythm in his legs. He's standing sideways so that way he's using his entire left side of his body almost as a shield from, uh, from me when I come in. And it's also going to make his punch longer. He's going to squat using his legs. Never his back. He's going to squat using his legs underneath my own jab and he's going to shoot his jab at my body. Right at my ribs or my solar plexus. Ready? Here we go. That's it. Very nice. Placing it right in the right in the solar plexus. We'll go again. Good. Try the rib cage this time. Good. He could use that counter jab with the ducking, again, using the legs, at my face. He could have done it at the face, but there is one thing I do have to emphasize. If he's going to do it at the face, he has to do it at an upward angle. Upward angle, it would be a line going this way. And he has to push, really push, off of his back foot. He has to push off of his right foot. And here's the reason why. I'm going to ask you to do it that way, with your weight forward, coming up at an angle, as you squat underneath, pushing off of the back foot, hitting my head. Ready? Here we go. Boom. Okay. The reason why is, when he hits his opponent, he has to explosively knock him off balance if he's hitting the face and the head. We'll do that again. Same thing. You duck and then hit at the same time. Boom. Okay. If he knocks his opponent off balance, even if his opponent is really strong, really tough, mentally, you know, psychologically tough and really well conditioned, his opponent still won't be able to come back. We'll do that again. Same exact thing. Oh. Okay. Knocking him off balance. If he doesn't do it that way, this time don't do it that way. Even put your weight back as you throw. This time put your weight back when you, when you duck and hit me, okay? Oh, this will happen. <laughs> uh, if his opponent is really, really uh, well conditioned and he doesn't knock his opponent off balance and attempts that, his opponent could just eat the punch and come back with his own. We'll do it the wrong way again. We'll do it incorrectly. Ready? Boom, boom. Okay? So keep in mind that if you are going to use this counter jab defense to the head, Knock him off balance by pushing off of your back foot. We'll do it correctly again. Ready? Knock me off balance as you make me miss. <sighs> okay? That's what you want. You want to snap his head back and make him lose his balance. That way he can't come back with the right hand. And as an added, added protection, if he would like, if he, if he can, and sometimes it's hard with the headgear, but, you know, because the headgear is big and bulky, but if he can, he can even put his right hand right in front of his face as he goes for that counter jab uh, underneath. Okay, so let's do the same thing again, but this time put the right hand there. Oh, good. So that way, even if he doesn't knock him off balance, it's better to take, the, take your opponent's counter off of your counter on your glove as opposed to your face. Good. For this last variation of using the jab to counter your opponent's jab, uh, we're not going to go with the uh, medium shots uh, that we used for the other ones. We're only going to do long shots, and the reason why is because uh, I want you, the viewer, to see what Ali's doing with his feet um, as well as his body the whole time, because this time he's actually going to step back. He is going to step back, but ideally when he steps back off of, off of his opponent's jab, uh, he shouldn't step straight back, ideally. Sometimes during the course of the competition, he might. And that's better than, than, eating, the, than eating the jab. But uh, ideally, he should angle off either that way to his uh, back right or that way to his back left. 
Now what's going to happen is, when he times my jab, he's going to keep his left foot in the same spot. He's not going to move his left foot back. He's going to keep it there so that way he has enough reaction time to come back at me. He is going to push off of the left foot though as he steps back with his right. So he takes his stance. He's got his whole left side facing me, and he's got his left shoulder rolled into it, rolled into his chin. When I throw my jab, he's going to step back with his right foot, but keep his left foot there at an angle. Doesn't matter which angle you go. Good. Now, immediately, within a half beat, he pushes off of his back foot and comes back right away with his own jab. There it is. Okay, let's get used to that. So he's got me timed. I'm coming in with my jab, he steps back, and right away, boom, pushes off of his back foot. So it's a half beat rhythm, one and, ready? One and, one and, there it is. Comes back quickly. Half beat rhythms cut down on your opponent's reaction time. So rather than going one, two, let's do it as one, two, as one, two. One, two, it gives him a chance to, to, to obey. Now, do it as one and. Half beat rhythm. One and one. There it is. Cuts down on the reaction time. The, and the other reason uh, I talked about, the other thing I talked about was keeping the left foot there. By keeping his left foot there, he can also come back quicker. This time, slide your left foot back. Okay? You ready to go? Get everything out. That's it. Now I'm back to, we'll just be going back and forth. Keep that left foot there. Boom, boom. Good. Let's do that several times from this side. Ready? Here we go. Good. One, again. Boom, boom. Two, again. Right of my face. Boom, boom. Good. Obviously, everybody talks about keeping your hands up. It's not enough to just keep your hands up. It's important to keep your hands up and in front of your face. So you want to have them in front of your face, ready to catch. Because at the beginning, you're going to try to feel out your opponent and get used to his rhythm. So rather than take him on the chin, you'll take him on your gloves as you get a, get a feel for his rhythm and his habits. And then off of that, you'll be able to counter. Um, it's very difficult to perform slips, bobs, and weaves if you're not already in motion. So it's important not to just stand still when you're, when you're about to perform your slips or bobs or weaves, you want to make sure that you're already in motion. You want to have a slight head motion, and you also want to have a little bit of a uh, rhythm in your legs. You don't want to hop up and down, okay, because you'll gas out, but you do want to have a rhythm in your legs and already some head motion, and then with that, then you should be able to perform your slips, bobs, and weaves. Um, all of your slipping, all of your bobbing, all of your weaving, all of your ducking is performed with your legs. Let me say that again. Very important that you do not bend from the waist and you do not, you do not uh, basically take a bow. So you don't want to do that, okay? You don't want to feel that in your lower back. That will throw your back out. Your, your face will be facing the floor. You won't be able to see. And it's also too slow. You'll never be able to pull it off. Or at least most of the time you won't be able to pull it off. All of your slipping, your bobbing, and your weaving is performed by basically squatting. You're basically doing a modified squat through your legs, through your knees. If you're doing it right, your quadriceps will be sore the next day. So you're using your legs. I should also say this too. When you're doing your jab, you're also using your legs. It's not just an arm punch. Um, to be honest, most of your punches are not arm punches. They're really performed by rotating the hip and by pushing off of the floor. Let me say that again. You want to push off of the floor explosively, that's very important, explosively push off of the floor while you're rotating your hips to get maximum power. So uh, when boxers talk about the guy's got no more legs, that's very important because uh, even though you're not kicking, you're punching, your power is generated through your legs and your hips and then the hands are the end result. And that also includes your left jab, or if you're softball, your right jab.